Okay, welcome everybody. It's great to be back on the Results Podcast. My name is Steve Mills, and again, I'm here to share with you some tried, tested, and proven ways to grow your business. Now, today I'm here with a, a lady that I've known only for a few months, but she's certainly someone that I've uh, began to really uh, under start to understand, I think, her skills. And those skills are in the world of podcasting. So today's results that we're trying to achieve are ultimately how can we improve our podcast if we've, if we've got a podcast that's great and i really hope you have if you haven't then this will maybe be the the thing that will push you over the edge and get you get you going in this you know new fantastic podcasting world, or at least it's new for some people. Um, I'm on, uh, I think this is episode 188, so I've been doing it a little while now, and uh, it's great to uh, be here uh, interviewing Anne-Marie Cross, who's known as the podcasting queen. Now, Anne-Marie's coming to us all the way from Australia today, so we really are global today. Um, I'm over here in the UK, so we're literally worldwide. So welcome to the conversation, Anne-Marie, and uh, thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you so much, Steve. Great to be here. By the way, that name, uh, the podcasting queen, that is not something that I gave myself. I know in the UK, in Australia, we often, you know, who does she think she is? That's something that many of my community members started calling me or referring to me okay, as great. years ago. And eventually I thought, you know what, it grew on me and I thought I'm going to embrace that title. So uh, no, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, I, I love things like that. I think it, one of the things that's really important in whatever you do, whether it's podcasting or webinars or whatever, is to be different. You know, uh, if, if, if you can be different in your marketing, then I think that's a real, real key. So just, just to kick off, why don't you tell the, uh, the listeners a little bit about you and how you became the podcasting queen? Well, that takes us right back to 2008. I was in the career industry working with job seekers, but also executives, professionals who wanted to climb the corporate ladder. So helping them in resume development, interview coaching, that kind of thing. But for those of us who were in business and maybe even in careers at that time, you would recall that that was when the global financial crisis hit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. one of the things that a colleague and I, and he was also in the career industry, we were quite disillusioned with the doom and gloom that mainstream media, which typically was print, it was uh, radio and television, were all talking about the, the downfalls, the downcast, you know, all of that, which it was true, there were a lot more challenges ahead for job seekers, and things were were different, and, and certainly were difficult. But we knew that if people continue to listen to the doom and gloom, it was going to to impact their psyche and we wanted to be the voice of hope and inspiration we had no idea what we were doing we used a platform called blog talk radio which when we go back and listen to some of those early episodes it was like oh the sound quality was just horrendous yeah. but it was the platform that we had my colleague co-host and colleague had done 12 months of um, radio hosting uh, studies and he was told at the end of that 12 months you do not have a voice for radio it's too squeaky so he kind of had a bit of training in that area and we just started because we knew the, the the message that we wanted to share around the world was going to help people and it certainly did but an area that we struggled in Steve because podcasting no one knew what a podcast was people even years after we'd done that for two years which what is a po what are you doing in this podcasting no one's listening to podcasts you know that kind of thing but I knew uh -huh. it was a, an incredibly powerful medium because of the results as far as influence and as far as impact had been concerned. The feedback that I we and I got from our listeners to say, you know, we love listening to your show. We we book this in every single week. We were doing it live, mind you. So any technical issues, it was live on air. I had one time where I had to fill a whole hour where a guest had got the time schedules incorrect, and I had no guests lined up. And I thought, well, that's great. Wow. My co-host wow. is on holiday. What am I going to do? But luckily, out on Twitter, and I filled the show with uh, some of the regular listeners. We we did the show, but. It, you know, looking back, the thing that we struggled with the most was 
monetization. And whilst we hired mentors back then who were traditionally from mainstream media, really the only thing that they could share with us was you need sponsors and you need advertisers. But uh, what was then looked at as negative is now really positive in that podcasting is a real niche space. It's a real mm. niche audience. And the narrower you go, the faster you will grow. That's what I say to people, even if you're not podcasting, your message out on whatever medium you're sharing that on. And so whilst back then we could not approach sponsors and advertisers because they were looking at, you know, what are the hundreds and thousands of audience and listeners and so forth. We just didn't achieve that at that stage. And so we ended the show. I'd con continued to podcast through the years. And it wasn't till uh, 2014, I'd entered into a partnership. And well, mind you, there is, a, there is a, a method to why I'm sharing this because it takes me on the journey to where I am today. So we, I'd entered into a partnership and that unfortunately um, came to an end. And I took a step back and I thought, my goodness, this is the worst business failure ever. What am I going to do? Couldn't write, couldn't um, create content anymore and I'm a prolific content creator and I thought I can't write I can't do anything like that but what I can do is ask really good questions so I'm going to start women in leadership podcast and go out and seek out women who have overcome challenges overcome failure and what are their secrets what are the things that they do and unbeknownst to them uh, that's what I did three episodes in, I accidentally generated two four-figure clients. And it wasn't until later on, I thought, man, if I can do that by accident, starting a podcast that I had only um, as a way for me to continue to engage as I got yeah. over that, that bump. Uh, and if I could do that accidentally, imagine if I backtracked what were the steps that had these two people who had absolutely no idea who I was come across the website, listen to those three episodes where I was interviewing people? If I could bottle that up, what could I do if I did that intentionally? So that's what I did. Took some time out, really um, tracked what were the steps and what was there that enabled them to come to the conclusion that I want to work with Anne-Marie What's the best program for us? And so a program, a book later, Podcasting with Purpose has now come about. So that's really where I love to support, you know, change makers who are service-based businesses who really are experts in their particular field. How do I position myself as that trusted authority, but be able to use my podcast as a way to build reach, my reputation as a trusted authority and ultimately revenue as you begin to nurture those listeners into leads, inquiries, and ultimately paying customers so yeah it was through that accident that uh, has now come yeah, about wow, and, and wow. really track those steps and that's what I love to teach others that's fantastic that's a great story it's interesting isn't it how businesses start you know they're often so varied you know that people lose their job or decide that they want to go into business because they've been doing the work for many many years but people are, are, are very different I, I I love that story that's uh, that's fantastic so you know I I like you have been doing this for for quite some time I've actually been around in the marketing space advising people for 25 years I was uh, obviously very young when I started uh, but uh, um, you know in, in that time the world has changed you know back when I started off you had a choice of like you know the, the probably the best two mediums were you know you could advertise on the tv or you could advertise on the radio and newspapers magazines and so on and so forth um, now you could argue that you know tv has been replaced although obviously it's still around but certainly YouTube has taken over that maybe that advertising opportunity for small businesses a lot of us can't afford the TV still but we can afford to get on YouTube and and the same sort of radio thing you know I've gone pay my five thousand pounds or whatever it is dollars about it's about a half is that right it's about ten thousand dollars five thousand pounds is that correct I'm, I'm not quite sure where we are at the moment well, it, yeah we're in we're in dollars is, is you're that in right? yeah yeah, yeah. In, in australia yeah yeah so um whatever it is anyway uh you know we, we can do that or we can set up podcasts now i know we were talking before uh the uh podcast today that you know 
podcasting's not like radio, radio, and I do understand that, but it's a way of getting voice out there to the to the uh, world, isn't it? So, what are the differences do you think between you know traditional radio advertising and and having your own podcast, and why would you have your own podcast rather than go and spend a load of money on radio? Great, great question. And I hinted to it earlier where I said it's very much a niche audience. And so what I traditionally see, and I've had a number of conversations with businesses who've set up podcasts and what what they've done is they followed the model of mainstream radio where you have a number of guests on the show and you intertwine ads or you might do some ad stacking where sponsors and advertisers get their message out to your audience and you know one particular example was a gentleman who has a business fitness, a fitness business. And so his idea was if I interview other businesses and talk about business topics, and then it's kind of in the middle and maybe at the end, I'll give a little bit of a spiel about who I am, because obviously if you're fit physically in your business, you're going to show up far better you know, uh, mentally, and, and that will impact your productivity. And then I said to him, you, you know, well, what about some of your ideal clients? Are they really struggling with? Imagine if you had identified some of the key struggles, some of the challenges, and started to speak into that and created a podcast series that really addresses that, but takes someone through that's interested and is sick and tired of being sick and tired with struggling with their health, identifying some of the key steps and then nurturing them through that. And as they're getting those mini wins, they're getting to know, like, and trust you even better. And then that call to action is, if this is something that you want to talk about, let's jump on a call and have a chat to see where, where I can possibly help you. Now, rather than having conversations which were, really not relevant to his ideal client. He was talking to all sorts of business owners in his network about all sorts of different topics that really his ideal clients probably not really thinking about, well, I'm listening to this podcast because there is an issue that I'm struggling with my health. And I think that this particular episode can help me. And so, you know, you'd have to take a lot more time in getting different content out. And I think podcast audiences from what I know to be true for myself when I'm listening and what I'm getting feedback from people who are avid podcast listeners is the thing that they hate the most is being sold to and having interruptions where an ad comes in and said, hey, you want to buy blah, 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 blah. We instantly turn off. Even when we see banners, you know, on Facebook and things like that, yeah, we've come yeah, yeah. In that so why not influence someone that and enter a conversation where they're at and then bring them along on that journey and so what I now share with people is you know that accident where I accidentally made three uh, I had three podcasts and made two four-figure clients we now say to people create a three-part podcast series that nurtures your okay, ideal client right, right. through the in areas of looking at their customer journey, what do they need to know? What's the next step? And as they start to walk that journey with you and build that trust and have those many wins, they're then in your funnel, they're then in your nurturing system that you can then really build that relationship with rather than having these random ads positioned within your podcast. And that's one of the things that I think works really well. Then you can look at your guesting strategy. You can look down the track at some of your sponsor strategies too, because you may be able to interview people who are also working with your ideal clients, which means the topic that they're sharing and speaking into is going to be relevant for your client. And as they're sharing that with their audience, they're also having an opportunity to interact with you. And then guess what? The call to action at the end of your podcast is, if this is something you're struggling with, I dive deeper into my podcast series. Here is where you can access that. And so what you're also doing and something else that I've been monitoring and have gotten some great feedback when we are offering a call to action and a resource, give the initial resource in the medium or in the mode that they are consuming the content where you're inviting them to access. So in other words, if you are sharing a, a topic on a podcast or you've got your own podcast, don't invite people to sign up for an ebook or a book or you know something like that because I've had feedback from colleagues who are not readers, which is why they love the audio platform mm -hmm. because they love to listen. Yeah. Of course, what you then do is you can then give bite-sized content 
with transcripts and other, you know, gifts and resources that you can share with that. But don't let that be um, a block where people think, no, I'm not signing up for a webinar series or just at that time yet. Because remember, when we're looking at the customer journey, there are different things that we need to tick in the mind of our ideal clients to say, yes, I'm going to give you extra time. Yes, I'm going to give you extra time. And then down the track, you can give them more resources from reading a webinar and so forth. But I find that a podcast series works really well because they're listening to a podcast yeah, yeah. Uh, in that initial interaction. Does that make sense? It makes total sense, yeah. And, and that's how I consume podcasts. I, I'm, I'm really a, an absolute fan of them. I mean, obviously, I've got my own, but you know, I spend a lot of time when I'm in the car, pretty much I'm listening to podcasts, you know, and uh, it, it, it's it's great when I go down the gym, you know, uh, I go out walking, I'm listening to podcasts pretty much all the time. Uh, yeah. The only other thing I do is uh, audible, you know, buy, buy the book and listen to that as well. So I'm either doing one thing or the other. And it's it's a great way of learning uh, in, in, in business. You know, it, it's it's really tough, I think to find the time as a business owner to, to learn. And, and as a marketer, it's also massive. It's just massive, you know, the amount of learning we need to do. You know, Google's just released this. And then, you know, and LinkedIn's changed and, and Facebook's got a new something, you know, and uh, all of a sudden it's just, like a full-time job. Just, just, just trying to keep up to date, yeah. And, and taking, taking an hour out and uh, you know of work and going and sitting down and learning something new about marketing often is really tough. But doing that on a podcast is actually really easy because I'm, uh, I, I call it, um, in fact, I, I pinched this from Tony Robbins. He calls it net time, no extra time. It doesn't take any extra time because I'm driving anyway or I'm walking anyway or I'm in the gym anyway. And I've got the, uh, the, the podcast on at the same time. So it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. Now, and no stronger medium than actually being able to speak into someone's ears. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, a, 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 if you subconsciously, you're really getting in, yeah, into yeah. that. And I know that there's been some people who say, yeah, but, you know, video is powerful too. Well, it yeah. is. But yeah. some mediums where I, I've even heard that a lot of people have given feedback that whilst they may have access to video, they're not actually watching it. They've minimized it and they're still doing a secondary activity. I, I do that. I do that. I've and I've had some marketers who I know have said, why do I spend so much? <laughs> I've got the one I'm looking into now. Then I've got one over there, which I, I sometimes have training on in the background. You know, like I might have YouTube or something like that. But I'm often half listening to it as I'm working. And, uh, yes. you know, it, it's it, you're absolutely right. It, it, it's so true. So with, with my podcast at the moment i've got um uh, just it's around about four thousand subscribers so we we sort of built it up it's not doing bad uh, and we got it uh, one of the things i think is great about a podcast is 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 not so much the the podcast itself but how you can get it out there so it's it's on youtube automatically it's on um itunes it's on amazon it's on uh, uh i forget now but a shit you know it's on uh, uh facebook Facebook and a shed load of different radio stations pick it up as well. What are your thoughts or tips to anybody about actually, you know, how do they grow their their fan base and, and grow that that podcast? Yeah, great, great question. And I think it's a never ending looking at all of the different ways that you can get it out there. And I know that we repurpose, we can create different snippets. But one of the things that I have found is that we're really when you look at so many business principles around marketing and what you know to be true around your message, really honing in. And I think even taking time now to look and revisit what's going on in my ideal client's space space in, in their industry, in their company, their business, that because of what's been happening has caused a number of different challenges. So I think it's, it's even more important for businesses to go really narrow and deep. And if you speak into that and bring your expertise, if you share innovation, if you do those things around the content development and sharing, that immediately you're going to be miles ahead, so much so that your audience is going to share 
about your content on your behalf. Yeah. And don't forget too that with the podcast audience, it's unlike where you might have people engaging with you if you're doing a live doing you know a video and you're actually interacting with people a yeah. podcast audience the the feedback that you get I would say is just a small portion of the people who will listen and I've even had people who've said oh man I, I just feel like I'm speaking to an empty room and then every now and again they'll get a message that just completely this is why I'm doing it and I said for that one message there's probably a hundred other people that are listening to your podcast that you'll yeah. never know about yes. so yeah. that's to be mindful about that too but also you know what are you doing as far as other things I mean you mentioned some great ones ways that you are able to, sh to share because I think now is so important that even though we know that get on a platform and really double down on that yes that's still very important because you don't want to stretch yourself out too thin but you also want to be able to have multi-channels where even if you're sharing small snippets so people can find you consume that and then you get them onto your list and start to nurture them that way yeah. so whilst I say to people don't be so concerned about the vanity numbers. I mean, I would rather have a thousand people who are active listeners, who are my ideal clients, my ideal community who are engaged than a million downloads and no one doing anything. But I've um, even had some colleagues so right. who have yeah, top rated yeah. podcasts yeah. as far as downloads, but uh, they had to walk away because they couldn't monetize it. And so work on vanity and not, don't focus on vanity metrics, but work on your reputation equity, which is all yeah. of the things we've been talking about. Yeah, because yeah. then you will notice that they will, will share that content for you. I, I think what you just said there is a really important point because, you know, w work on your reputation. I think actually just having a podcast improves your re reputation. It's a little bit like writing a book. And people go, oh, wow, this person's written a book. They must be an expert. Oh, wow, they've got a podcast. They must be an expert in what they do. So there's that perception you know it, it's like positioning you um you know let, let's say towards the top of the pyramid just because you've got a a, a podcast and then the fact that you've got you know a, an amount of of listeners only only adds to that so what, what let me ask you another question what would your tips be in terms of uh the the physical delivery you know but ma making sure your podcast when you press that button and turn it on, that you deliver, you know, really good content in, in a really good way. Yeah, great, great question. One of the things that I learned years ago as part of my business training was around communication and recognizing the different styles of communication and how visual communicators we need to know straight away what are the things that I'm going to take away from this what am I going to learn why should I give my attention and so one of the things that I say with podcasting and how you communicate especially in a very busy crowded space for attention for our ideal clients you need to let people know right up front what it is that they're going to learn and so gone are the days when you really are bantering um, there is room for banter. But again, if we look at the customer journey, and this is one of the things I say to clients, where are you going to be using your podcast as far as the customer journey? Are you going to use it for people who don't yet know you? Well, then you would not spend a lot of time bantering because I don't know you yet and I don't care what you're doing on the weekend. What I do care about is this, this information going to be yeah, relevant yeah, yeah. to me. But if I've done business with you and I know who you are and I really like you and I want to spend a bit of time for you, I don't mind if you share that because I'm actually interested in you as an individual, which is why I'm investing with you. So if you're tending to use it for already an engaged audience and maybe with inside a closed group that you're already nurturing and, and working with, going to be completely different as far as topic is concerned and as far as information is concerned. But what I've tended to do, and I've always done that, I always let people know right at the onset and this is my introduction you know what are they going to learn I always look at three key points that they're going to if they give me their attention for that half an hour or so these are the things that my guest and I are going to talk about this is what you're going to walk away with and I'm pretty much straight into the interview straight away right from the beginning rather than a lot of what I call fluff and banter at the beginning sure. you know that's why message is so important even before the make and model of your microphone because this is one of the things I say you yeah. can't edit mix compelling content that converts from fluff and banter because people have probably gone oh 
next, yeah. you know, yeah. next yeah. because there's so much content out there. And secondly, what I what I share with people, and I've created, and we probably don't have time to go into it today, but I what I call the positioning, the podcast positioning quadrant. And there's four different quadrants where if you look on the left-hand side going up, it's the audience, so low and high. And then down the bottom from the you know zero to, to outwards, it's low to high too. And that is your authority. Mm. And when you are, and there's nothing wrong with each of these quadrants, it's just where you want to be. Now you can be an entertainer, which is fine, but you have low, highly engaged audience and people who love who you are and you low authority because you're not really talking about topics that are of any authority of, of expertise that someone's going to go away with, they're just there to be entertained. Then if you go above the, the entertainer, you look at more of a celebrity and an influencer. So whilst they may have a highly engaged audience because the people love who they are and this, or, you know, the, the host has a real charisma that resonates with the audience, they're not actually, they have low authority because they're not actually seen as an expert in a particular field or topic. Then if we okay. have a look at the right hand side from the entertainer, it is the expert. And this is where there is high authority. Like, and this is where I say to people, people will come to your podcast for the topic, but they'll return for the host. Because whilst they can listen to any podcast, many, many podcasts that talk about various topics that you talk about, that topic has attracted them and how you have engaged and how you've created this unique experience. That's what gets them back. And that's where you mm. see you become a trusted authority because you've got high audience, high charisma, high engagement, and you're also seen on that high authority with your content. And so that's what I really share with people, you know, from the topic headline to how you engage and bring that information across, keeping in mind the different um, communication styles and what they need as you're guiding them through each and every episode. That's when you can keep people really engaged uh, right through to the end. And those who are ready, which is a smaller percentage, that call to action is going to be far more compelling as you continue to seed and lead through that episode. So those are the kind of things that I that I really recommend people think about. And if you do that consistently, you're going to create a promise of value and a promise of expectation that every single episode that you share, they're going to walk away with some golden nuggets to be able to implement because you know who your ideal audience is and the value you continue to offer in their content is going to be relevant for them. I love that. I thought that was brilliant. I love the idea of that four quadrants. And your, or well, my aim certainly would be to try and, you know, get get myself into that, you know, where I'm, you know, I'm known, I'm, um, uh, you know, I'm delivering good content, I'm give, delivering valuable information. And, and people are, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, and I was talking about this to someone the other day. Uh, I was talking about buying training, you know, just generally, I buy quite, I, I, I spend quite a lot of money training myself in marketing and sales. And I've spent, oh, I dread to think, certainly way over 30, 40,000 uh, pounds on my own training, my own money. And uh, my, my criteria for doing that uh, is, is um, really, I think, based on personality of the person rather than the content of the training so if somebody comes to me that i don't know uh fred fred blogs comes and says i've got a, a training course on how to do podcasts and i i think yeah i'd quite like to learn how to do that better but mm, don't really know fred uh Whereas if somebody like, I don't know, a, a Grant Cardone or, a, you know, a, um, a, you know a Anne-Marie Cross or somebody like that, you know, comes who I know, who I respect, and I know is, a, is an expert, actually, the, the training's not quite so important. So, so if somebody like, say, a Tony Robbins comes along and says, right, I've got a new course, this is what it's about, I'm signed up, you know. Great, great yeah. trainer, been on many, spent many thousands of pounds with him over the years. And if he's got something new that he tells me is good, he, he's, he's got that, that credibility with me already to know that, right, I'm going to buy that because yeah. it's Tony Robbins and I know it's, it's going to be good. So yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's a really powerful thing, You've, you know, getting to that level, not easy, but incredibly powerful. 
Yeah. yeah. One of the things that you said there, I, I, and I really do encourage people to think about that, that's all what, part of what I call personal branding. And that's yeah. what I spent decades working on in the career industry. Sure. So yeah, yeah. It's wonderful how now we bring that into, well, how can you bring that forward within your podcast? And a lot of times it's actually just allowing yourself to be you. And one of the interesting things, and I'll share this and then I'll go back and, and share what, what we were talking about beautifully with the Tony Robbins example, is that statistics have proven you know and even through Edelman Trust Barometer and I think I might have mentioned that through our conversations before we, we started on, on here on the podcast Edelman is a, an, an organization that monitors what creates trust and they have over the years they've been doing this for several decades but over the last number of years what they've proven is people do not like scripted and they do not like things to no. be over professional because what happens is if you look at some of the, the industry such as government such as media such as what other is there there's not-for-profit and then there's also uh, industry two of the least trusted industries believe it or not is politics government and media I believe that. because of fake media yeah. and so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. anything yeah. that seems a little bit overproduced we instantly go mm, don't know if yeah, I yeah. trust that there's skepticism and so people love that authenticity and what I find when I share that with people is you don't need to do a million takes you don't need to sound like a broadcaster you and I don't totally turn your audience mean, off yeah, people say to me, "Oh, you, you do you do lots of videos, Steve, and lots of podcasts. How long does it take you to do them?" And I say, "Well, a ten-minute videos, it's about ten minutes." What? what? <laughs> you know, they look at me, go. So, what about the scripting? I've never scripted a video. I've been doing this twenty-five years now. I can just talk. You know, I just, I just, just go for it. Think of a subject. You know, and probably have two or three things, as you suggested. But these are the three points I'm going to go go through, and and you know, I'm experienced enough, just like you are. You know, the the, the structure of this podcast today, we didn't really say, right, I'm going to ask this, you're going to ask that, and that's what you're going to say. We just went for it, didn't we? And uh, hopefully, we produced a really good podcast. I'm sure we have. Um, but it, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's it's a really good point that I, I really uh, do do like the it's idea. Important, of and I hopefully that for some people who think, oh, well, you know, I don't have the voice, or I don't have the the backdrops and things like that. If yeah. they're going to incorporate live stream, you don't actually need to do that. In fact, some of if you look at some of the YouTubers now, if I think of my daughter daughters especially my youngest one she is glued to youtube with all of these these influences she's at that age yeah, yeah. and they really are speaking into to that life and some of them they're just holding their mobile phone their smartphone and off they go with that yeah. content yeah, yeah. just getting back to that charisma and tony robbins and I, yeah. i'll be brief in this but one of the things that i've noticed when we're, we're really wanting to build that trusted authority there's three key areas that you want to focus on there is content and you want that to be cut through content how how are you challenging the status quo? What's unique? What are some of the things that can be validated through what other industries have been doing some research? Like for me, I often will go to Edelman. I'll look at some other sources to validate what I'm also seeing. And I bring that forward in my content. Um, then the second is community. If you know that your ideal client is this particular person, these are the core values, this is what they're looking for. You create that community where people have a common like mind mindedness that is when that community actually starts to create this this entity or in and of itself but then the third c is charisma and that is where you need to know what is my secret source what do i do that when i just step into that fully and just be me and give myself to be to permission to be me that is when my community loves what i'm doing what mm -hmm. i stand for they want to aspire yeah. to be like me and and the impact yeah, yeah. that i because many of us are service-based businesses we're teaching what we know to be true because we've lived you know we've lived it we've made all of the mistakes and then some of and now are teaching principles that will help our clients get to where they want to be far quicker without all of the heartache and the expense that we've paid to get there. And so when we have those three th key things that consistently comes through in every piece of content, whether you're podcasting, live streaming, writing an article, whatever, um, that will continue to have what I call the layered um, 
reputation building because every single piece, whether it be uh, on Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook, people are consistently seeing this message that's on brand, on topic. And eventually when they get to their buying stage where, yep, I'm ready to make that decision, you're always top of mind because you're someone that they want to learn from. And that's exactly what you mentioned, Tony Robbins. You love what he does. Yeah. He Cheers, I'm doing this course and you're already kind of thinking, well, I'm booked. What, what is that course? Here's my yeah, credit yeah, it's card. It's almost, I want to book it. What, what is it? <laughs> By the way, what is the course that we're doing? Yeah, where's the money, Tony? What is it we're doing? Yeah, uh, you know, and, and joking aside, when you get to that level, you know, I've probably got about 15, perhaps 20 people who I know in the world are world-leading experts in sales and marketing that, that they, they've got me to that level. Uh, where you know if they do something, pretty much uh, I want to want to get get myself signed up to that, um, assuming you know time and so on and so forth. So that's that's really powerful. Uh, look, we, we're just about to come to the end. Uh, sadly, it's gone really really quick. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed it. I'm sure they have. Um, I, I thought it was fantastic. Thank you ever so much for your time, Anne Marie. It's been brilliant. So. Just to finish off, could you just tell people how they can access you, what you can do for them, and what's the best way of getting in touch? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Steve. So I have a 90-day program, which is called Podcasting with Purpose, um, Idea to Launch. But one of the things that I say to people is a podcast, as you probably already gathered, is an amplification vehicle. There's no sense launching a podcast if one of the struggles or challenges that you've had is my message is not cutting through and I'm actually not getting any clients. I would advise you to spend some time and really nail that message. You should already be getting clients from that and then you're ready to layer that podcast over the top. If you're not quite ready, I've created um, the Influence Alliance, which is the business building communities for change makers. We build those core foundations in the message, signature systems, signature programs, a digital asset, and we create a quiz. We help our clients create a quiz. One of my clients got three VIP clients and now she's building a a uh, course because she said my calendar's full I don't want to take on any more private clients because I know that's going to stretch me thin but now she knows when she layers the, the the podcast strategy on top of that her message is working already she knows that it's going to work so the influencealliance.com is a really great place to start if people are still not sure about that message and they want to get that core foundations in place and then from there once they're in that community and it's a low it's a low membership type which allows them to tap into a, a great community and great content to help them build that and then the podcastingwithpurpose.com is where they can find out a bit more information about the podcasting uh, course and the program is one where I am working closely with people every single week to get them from idea to launch and I've also got some private client work that I can do a few uh, that I take on uh, board every month as well I'm happy to have a chat just reach out to me uh, okay. at podcastingwithpurpose.com the contact details okay. are there. podcastingwithpurpose.com thank you uh, that, that, that's brilliant so um, just remains for me to say a big thank you for uh, to everybody who's uh, either were watching uh, perhaps on YouTube today or who's live on my podcast it's great to have you here uh, thank you for your time really look forward to speaking to you again soon uh, if you need any help from uh, ourselves then uh, feel free to go to stevemills.co uh, um, uh, have a look at what we do if you want to book a meeting if you want uh, to attend my, my webinar uh, you'd be very very welcome to do so and uh, look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Thank you very much for listening.